Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to today's meeting of Gedley Borough Council Planning Committee. My name is Councillor John Truscott and I am Chair of the Planning Committee. First, I must give the official webcasting notice and remind you that the audio of this meeting is being live broadcast on the Council's website and the video of the meeting will be published after the meeting on YouTube. Uh, our previous uh, planning committee meeting, uh, YouTube has uh, attained a total of 91 hits so far. Uh, I'd like to introduce the officers from Gettingborough Council who will be providing support during the meeting. These are Mike Avery, Assistant Director, Planning and Regeneration. Kevin Cartwright and Nigel Bryan, Principal Planning Officers. Sarah Pregon, solicitor from our legal department, Alec Doubley, service manager, Democratic Services, and Kate Goodall, Democratic Services Officer and clerk to the committee. Good evening. A few preliminary notices because of the changes to normal procedure, because of course this is a virtual meeting. Will all members of the committee please ensure that their microphones are switched off or muted, as we call it now, when they are not required to speak and switched on or unmuted when they are called on to speak and they speak clearly and distinctly into their microphones? Will all councillors please try and limit their contributions to three minutes or less in order that everyone gets a fair chance to air their views? There will also be the following changes to the normal procedure. Firstly, under apologies for absence and substitutions, the clerk to the committee will introduce all councillors who have registered their attendance as well as apologies and substitutions. At that point in the agenda, when I would normally ask for a proposer and seconder from the floor, to avoid confusion, I will propose each item on the agenda as chair and Councillor Paul Wilkinson will second as vice chair. <clears throat> this in no, is in no way an indication of support or opposition to any proposal or application by either of us, but merely a means of expediting the proceedings. Mm. When it comes to that point on the agenda, when I would normally open up the meeting for contributions from the floor, Instead, the clerk of the committee will ask councillors in alphabetical order to make their contributions, questions, etc. Please observe the three minute rule. Similarly, when it comes to the vote at the end of the item, that will be conducted alphabetically as well. Uh, I hope you've all received your supplements to the main agenda papers, elevations, photos, planning applications although well, these will be displayed on your screen at the appropriate time. Finally, there will be a short comfort break after mm. item five on the agenda. And also because of a, uh, I normally take uh, any other important items as the last item on the agenda. So um, that will there be just a slight alteration that um, the planning delegation panel sheets will now be item 15 on the agenda, future application 16, and then any other items which the chair considers urgent as 17 and the final item. Okay, so we'll move to item one on the agenda, which is apologies for absence and substitutions. Kate, if you would like to take over. Yep, so apologies. Um... We've received from Councillor Rosa Keneally and Councillor Barbara Miller and Councillor Ron McCrossan is substituting this evening. So um, just take attendance now, please. So Councillor Truscott. Here. Councillor Wilkinson. Here. Councillor Adams. Here. Councillor Barnes. Here. Councillor Barnfather. Here. Councillor David Ellis. Here. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Here. Councillor Elwood. Here. Councillor Hope. Proof. Councillor McCrossan. Here. Councillor Lawrence. Here. 
Councillor Paling. Find the button here. <laughs> Councillor Parr. Here. Councillor Scroggy. Here. And Councillor Wheeler. Hello. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Second item on the agenda is to approve as a correct record the meeting, the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of June 2020, which you'll find on pages 5 to 32 of your agenda papers, rather than go through the list alphabetically. Uh, if anyone doesn't approve, will they please speak up? Otherwise, we'll take them as read. Okay. You'll Chairman, if I may, if I may. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't at that meeting. John, is that recorded? Or will it be recorded? Well, that will have been recorded in the, in the minutes, yes. But, but I can't minutes. approve or whatever. As well, it that's stands. correct. You can't. Yeah. OK, thank you. That's fine. Um, planning Committee protocol, which you'll find <coughs> on page 33 to 35. I'm sure you've all read. Item three on the agenda is declarations of interest. I've got no general declarations to make. Are there any individual ones? Nope. Okay. Uh, we go on to item four on the agenda, which is application 2019 stroke 1079, land adjacent to Clement Private Road, Woodborough. And we have a speaker, uh, Mr. Andrew Prestwich. Is Andrew Prestwich with us? This is application for three dwellings. Yes, Mr. Right. Mr. Prestwich is, is in attendance, Chair. I am. Um, hello, thank you. OK, um, Mr. Uh, Presswich, you've uh, got three minutes and if Kate, you could uh, do the timing for me. I'd yep. be much obliged. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I take it everyone can hear me and probably see me as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I can hear see you. you and hear you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing an echo. I've just heard everything twice. I'll stop. I'll start now. I've, yes. I've worked hard to produce a worthwhile group of three family homes for this site in Woodburn. The plan has been conceived in consultation with, with Mike Avery and Nigel Bryan at Gedling, together with a first rate team of architects and also input from local residents. And I've just realised why it is that I can hear the echo. It's because I'm hearing this also, of course, back through the website if i cut the web website out that will make it better won't it does that make that better for you as well there we go um so this plan has been conceived in consultation with mike avery and nigel bryan at gedling uh, uh, together with a first rate team of architects and indeed input from local residents i showed the original plans to the householders living immediately nearby showed them individual told them uh, what was happening they asked questions, which I answered. I invited them to revert to me if they wished. Um, they know me. I live 200 yards away. None of them did in fact come back to me. Then uh, I realised from the committee report that there have been some letters of objection. Um, those letters uh, of objection, or at least the list of objections, seem to me, if I may say so, to be misconceived and indeed wrong. And I suspect they'd have been put forth with irrespect of the style of the proposed houses. Uh, I understand. From Nigel Bryan, some of the letters are from residents of Broad Close. That's getting on for 100 yards to the south of this site. Uh, they fear an increased flood risk, but our three houses are not going to have any impact on Broad Close at all. The three houses will have back gardens, which are south facing, which will soak up some surface water. There is no possible flood risk from those houses to Broad Close. Private Road is a road which has, for 60 years at least, comprised a mix of contemporary and traditional houses, including some avant-garde designs from the 1960s. There's a very modern conversion immediately next door to our 
site at the house called Plemont. That conversion is not yet finished, but is in the same style as our three proposed houses, red brick, render, large windows, including at the rear a picture window which fills the wall and indeed goes right up to the top of the apex. Uh, the conversion of Plemont is scarcely visible from the conservation area, and the same will be true of our houses, which will have broader the same height as Plemont and exactly the same height as Windways on the other side of our site. In order to see Plemont from the conservation area, one has to be standing on one particular part of the governor's field opposite the end of uh, Row Lane. And the reality is that in any meaningful terms, Plemont is and our houses will be invisible from the totality of the conservation area. I gather that someone's written to say that we don't have a right of way along private road. My family have only used this land since before most of the houses on private road were built and we have a clear right of way in the title deeds for all purposes. People these days want to live in houses which are let in a lot of light, they want open plan Three living, minutes. they want flexibility, and that, that's all provided. Uh, thank you. Can I, 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 because, of the, because of the volume earlier and I had to make an adjustment, can I just say that the, the roof is particularly clever on these because it runs north to south and breaks up the roof line and helps enormously the house immediately opposite. Um, I, I've sent in the written submission setting out these points and I trust that you'll be able to look at that if you need anything further. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know what's happened, but my screen has gone completely. Uh, mine has as well. Mine too. Okay, I'm seeing your email currently. Who is I think you've email? shared your Stop. screen. It's not my screen. Oh. Oh, oh no, it's Councillor oh, Meredith. It's your, I, th your I think it's Councillor Lawrence. Um, yeah, if you can click your three buttons and the share screen button in the middle, you click that, it should take okay. it off. I don't touch anything. I've, I've, I've clicked the three buttons. Oh, oh, where the hell did it? Sorry. I don't know how that happened. There we go. Back to normal. Okay. Oh, yeah, got it. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> um, Mike, uh, sorry, uh, Mike Avery, do you want to add anything to this? Thank you, Chairman. The application site forms part of a site allocated for 15 dwellings in the local planning document under policy LPD 70. A separate application has been made for a development of 11 dwellings, which is proposed to be accessed from Broad, broad Close. This application is still pending consideration and will be referred to a subsequent meeting of the planning committee. Private road is an area that is mixed in its form and has a wide range of dwellings upon it in terms of scale, materials and layout, with a number of dwellings individually designed. The design of the elevations and fenestration of the proposed dwellings are modern in appearance and would include a mixture of materials, including render, red brick, zinc and some timber cladding. While I accept that the design is a subjective matter, Having regard to the mixed character of private road, in my opinion, the appearance of the development would respect the character of the area. The site is elevated and there are views from Main Street, which is within the Woodbrook Conservation Area. As detailed in the report, the Conservation Officer notes that the design of the dwellings and their scale will be at odds with the settlement form and believes something more modest in scale and traditional would be preferable. The case officer raised these concerns with the applicant and they did not wish to make any amendments to the proposal. It is apparent that the application site is approximately 130 metres from the conservation area boundary. And whilst there are views from the conservation area, I don't agree that the development would have a detrimental impact upon its setting. Car parking provision is policy compliant and the Highways Authority has raised no objection to three additional dwellings taking an access from private road. Despite the proposed development falling below the threshold whereby planning obligations would usually be sought, it forms part of a wider allocated development site 
with similar ownerships and therefore applying proportionate planning obligations is considered to be acceptable. No contribution towards affordable housing is sought because a wider development will be less than 15 dwellings. An education contribution, £10,234 is sought towards secondary education. This equates to three fourteenths of the overall contribution of 47750 for the wider development. A public transport contribution of £1,285 is sought towards improvement towards response <coughs> within the village in the form of raised curves. <coughs> this equates to three fourteenths of £6,000. A public <coughs> open space contribution of £17,854, comprising of £12,576 towards play equipment within Woodborough and £5,278 towards future maintenance is required. Again, these figures equate to three fourteenths of the overall amount required for the wider um, site. These contributions sought are considered to be in full conformity with the lo local planning document and national policies and also um, the community infrastructure levy regulations. I recommend that permission is granted in accordance with the report. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. So there you have the proposal. Uh, full planning for three detached residential properties. Uh, on page 38. Um, well, I'm going to move as chair, I will officially move this. And I will second it. Thank you very much. So I will now um, open the debate and ask Kate to call on the councillors in alphabetical order for their comments or questions, please. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Thank you, uh, Kate, and thank you, Chair. Um, just, just one thing I really want to raise and just a question for uh, Mr Avery is around the planting uh, plan after this obviously has been removed. I haven't come across a landscape plan anywhere. Um, I, note, I note in section 4.2 of the application, it talks about um, from Woodford Parish Council talking about the planting of trees um, and the replacement of those trees um, being done by the uh, developer. Can we have some confirmation on what that is and, and if that is as part forms part of the actual application, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, so condition four um, of the recommendation requires um, details of both hard and soft landscaping works to be submitted to and approved uh, in writing by the local planning authority. So in answer to your question, um, you know, that, that matter um, will be provided. Um, the approach is that um, condition four would need to be discharged. So the applicant for planning permission would need to provide those details subsequently to the borough council should um, the planning committee resolve to grant planning permission with the conditions. Okay, thank you. Councillor Barnes. No comment, supported. Councillor Barnfather. No, I'm happy with uh, Mr Avery and Mr Presswich's contribution, which has addressed any issues I may have had. Thank you. Councillor David Ellis. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm happy that the buildings are appropriate and uh, for for the area, and I'm pleased to see that uh, there's a section 106 agreement in place. So I'm happy with it. Councillor Rachel Ellis, uh, I'm content with the recommendation. Thank you. No further comment. Councillor Elwood, uh, no comment to add uh, at this stage. Councillor Hope, yeah, I I've got a question, and you can probably answer it. Um, reading through the, the, the paperwork, I see that this is a site that can take up to 15 homes. And if it did, um, it would have to um, offer some affordable housing. I note that Woodborough Carriage Council um, make that as an observation that affordable housing should be provided. But later on in the, 
in the paperwork, um, it's sort of a bit of a fudge. I'm not quite sure what is happening, but there's no intention of asking for Section 106 towards affordable housing, and there's no intention, as far as I can see, of asking for affordable housing. I mean, is this a, a, another way round uh, a developer not providing any affordable housing when clearly there's an opportunity to do it? And of course, 20% on 15 is five houses. Nothing on 14 is no houses. You know, how, how do you explain that? Why are we allowing a site that could usefully and in the view of the parish council necessarily provide affordable housing is being allowed not to do that thank you councillor hope if i can um, come back to you and answer that question so uh, the affordable housing policy um, in the local planning document and the supplementary planning document that is um, only engaged um, when the development proposed it is 15 or more dwellings. The yeah. aggregate level of dwellings proposed here, so the application before you this evening is for three dwellings. And as I outlined earlier on, we have a pending planning application for 11 dwellings. So there's no policy basis for requiring affordable housing, um, a, a contribution towards affordable housing or affordable housing to be provided on the application site. But, but you, state, you do state quite clearly in the paperwork that this site is 0.75 hectares and <coughs> quite able to support 15 houses. So, so are you saying then that because it's a small site and because the developers lock the house off, we're going to lose three houses that would be affordable in Woodborough when the parish council is making it clear that affordable housing should be provided. It seems to me this is, again, manipulating the, the, the planning system in order to avoid the, the things that we want. And I'm conscious that at, my, at the last scrutiny meeting, we were, we were looking at um, 360 houses being built and falling short of our target of only 18 affordable social housing. Um, you know, on 360, 18 is not a proper target, and yet we still fell short of it. And yet more and more I'm seeing that people, and, 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 and I'm assuming that is Gebling Borough Officers working with developers, because the, the, the chap at the beginning made it clear that this whole development was talked through with Nigel Bryan, the case officer, and it's it's a, a wonderful development based on their, their getting together. Um, essentially, the, the one thing it misses out is our commitment to provide affordable social housing. And the site is big enough. Surely Mr. Bryan should have been arguing against the developer saying, no, you need to build 15 houses of which three will be affordable rather than 14 of which none will be affordable. Uh, that, that's my point, and, and I, I worry about this in the planning process be, because I'm pretty sure at no point in coming to um, put this forward as a proposal, Woodborough Parish Council were con consulted in any way whatsoever. They were consulted after the plans were produced and sent out. And I, I think you know, that the system that we're using doesn't take into account the requirements of communities or our requirements as councillors, because I feel very strongly that we should be building as many affordable and social houses as we can, but this borough council is not doing that. Okay, if I could come back to you, councillor um, Hope, in relation to the way in which the applications have been determined, uh, well, have been considered. Um, as Mr. Presswich um, said earlier on when he speaks, and Mr. Presswich being the applicant for planning permission, there were meetings with the applicant. The policy positions of the council um, were quite clearly set out at these meetings in terms of um, 
you know, the, 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 the wider site is allocated for approximately 15 dwellings. It doesn't yeah, say yeah. that the site must be developed with 15 dwellings or the site shall be developed with no less than 15 dwellings. It refers to approximately 15 dwellings. Our affordable housing policy is only engaged at 15 or more dwellings. So, you know, the officers involved um, in relation in, 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 in this case have clearly pointed out to the applicant for planning permission our policy requirements. This application has to be considered and the subsequent application, um, which is still pending consideration, has to be considered on the basis of its merits having regard um, to our adopted planning policies. And in terms of um, the role of officers, um, you know, promoting affordable housing, you know, we absolutely do support um, the provision of affordable housing um, within the borough. So, you know, our, our policy position is that developments of 15 dwellings or more should provide affordable housing. Well, I'm, I'm going to accept that. I've got nothing against this development. But I just think that the whole way we work towards making provision has got to be looked at again, because as it stands at the moment, um, we're just not getting anywhere near a viable target or a useful target for the community that we're supposed to serve. And, and it, it seems to be happening over and over and over again. So, you know, Forgive me for thinking that there's been a little bit of uh, what's the word on, on the manipulation of the system to ensure that no affordable housing will be built here, despite the support for it from the Woodbury Parish Council. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Councillor Hope. Councillor Lawrence. No questions or comments. Councillor Paling. Thank you. I sympathise uh, with Councillor Hope. I, I would have liked to have seen at least a contribution to, towards some affordable housing, uh, but I recognise that that isn't possible uh, under the current um, it bloody is. circumstances. However, I am really pleased that um, there is a 106 agreement being entered into. Um, they haven't tried to get out of that, and that is very, going to be very useful for us to um, support the services that we so greatly need in the area. I was also very pleased to hear from Mr. Prestwich that um, he, he said, I think he said he owns Private Road, and so there won't be any um, problems of access for the new houses, because that did concern me a little, that there might be some civil action coming up. Thank you. Councillor Parr. Thank you. Um, have you got me? You got me? Yeah. We can hear you, yes. Okay, yes. yeah. Sorry. Oh, I panicked a bit there. Um, yes, I, I listened to uh, uh, the, the debates that's been coming through, especially regarding social housing, but I'm uh, quite happy to support the recommendation of granting planning permission. Thank you. Councillor Scroggy. No comment to make. <clears throat> Councillor Wheeler. No comments to make, but I have noted the comments made by uh, Councillor Ho. Thank you. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Kate. Um, yeah, like uh, I'd like Councillor Paling, I've got a lot of sympathy with. Uh, with some of the points that that, uh, that Councillor Hope has, has has made, but at the end of the day, I don't think we can compel developers to um, mm -hmm. to build more homes than they uh, that they intend to. Um, any concerns that I have had about these developments have been uh, addressed by uh, uh, by Mike Avery and, uh, and Mr. Prestwich, so uh, uh, I'm minded to support. Councillor McCrossan. Councillor, you're on mute there. Uh, no, no comments to make, but I, but I do genuinely feel there are some important comment uh, points made by Councillor Hope there. Thank you. 
And Councillor Truscott. Thank you, Kate. Well, I think my um, how can I put it antipathy to these to these sorts of uh, elaborate architectural styles for domestic dwellings is is pretty well known, and um, these are reflected in the comments of the uh, of the planning officer in paragraph seven point five, page forty two, where he says that traditional red brick dwellings would greater respect the character of the area and the conservation officer in paragraph 710 on page 43 where he says something more modest in scale and traditional in material would be preferable but i guess we are where we are and this is a small road sort of tucked away in the corner of a village so uh, you know, being, that being the case, I uh, I will indeed cast my vote in favour of this uh, uh, of this uh, application, which under other circumstances I might not have done. Okay. And um, would anybody else like to come back? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Over to you then, Chair. Okay. Well, the recommendation which you'll find on page 45 of your agenda papers, which is to grant planning permission subjects to the, um, into the owners entry into planning obligations and all the conditions listed below. So if Kate would like to uh, go through the list of councillors and, and garner the vote. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Barnes. Four. Councillor Barnfather. Four. Councillor Elli uh, David Ellis. Sorry. Four. Four. Coun Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Elwood. Four. Councillor Hope. Four. Councillor Lawrence. Four. Councillor Paling. Four. Councillor Parr. Four. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Councillor McCrossan. Four. And Councillor Truscott. Four. Thank you, Chair. That was carried. That was carried unanimously. Thank you all very much indeed. Uh, if we can carry on now to um, item five on the uh, agenda, which is application 2019-1186, land at the end of Linden Grove dwelling, gathering, sorry. And I believe we have um, Helen Ashworth of Northern Trust here to uh, to introduce this application. Are you here, Helen Ashworth? Good evening. Good evening. Pleased to see you and, and hear from you. Um, okay. Uh, you've got the uh, land on Linden Grove, Gedling, and you've got three minutes to make your presentation, please. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Helen Ashworth, and I'm a planner with Northern Trust, the applicant for this application. We are pleased with the officer's recommendation to grant permission and agree with the officer's conclusion that the principle of development is acceptable as the site is located in the Gedling planning documents and that there has been a material change in circumstance since the adoption of the local plan, given that the Gedling access road is now well under construction and has made significant progress today. This means that the site has come forward prior to completion of the Gedling access road without severe adverse impact on the road network. This is reflected by support for the proposal from Nottinghamshire County Council Highways. The application is supported by a comprehensive range of technical reports and assessments, including 
an ecology assessment, a detailed trans assessment, a heritage assessment, which concludes that there will be no harm to the setting of the Grade 2 listed Gedling House, a flood risk assessment and drainage strategy, which confirm that flood risk to the development is low and would ensure no increase in flood risk elsewhere. The application is also supported by an indicative master plan, which shows how the site could be developed to deliver 120 dwellings and public open space with no adverse impact on neighbour amenity. Following the submission of the application, Northern Trust have worked proactively with officers to address feedback received from consultees and neighbours including the submission of an amended access design uh, de demonstrating how the lay-by on Burton Road will be treated along with an updated travel plan, the provision of additional information on ground conditions and on how small areas of Japanese knotweed will be within the site will be treated. Amendments to the site boundary in response to uncertainties around land ownership. As a result of this and the comprehensive suite of technical documents submitted in support of the application, there are no technical or design related objections to the application for statutory consultees. The proposals would also deliver significant benefits, including market and affordable housing at 20%, open spaces, including a play area, ecological enhancement, a new pedestrian and cycle link onto Burton Road, and a comprehensive package of Section 106 contributions towards local infrastructure, including secondary education primary healthcare, Carlton Library and bus stop improvements. Therefore, to summarise, the site is sustainable and is allocated for development in the local plan. Granting approval of this allocated site will make an important contribution towards the supply of market and affordable housing in the borough, allowing development to progress in accordance with the development plan. There are no technical or design related objections from consultees. And the site will deliver significant benefits, including delivery of housing, open spaces, and a comprehensive package of Section 106 obligations. Therefore, planning consent should be granted in accordance with officer recommendation. Thank you very Thank much indeed. Um, okay, Mike uh, Avery, the Assistant Director, would you like to uh, elaborate on this application? Councillor Truscott, Mr. Brian, Principal Planning Officer, will be introducing this application. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, firstly, I just need to do a few um, updates in terms of the con conditions that are before you in the report. And um, that's mainly linked to the application potentially coming forward in phases if members obviously minded to, to grant it. So uh, um, conditions in 12 and 13, it's just proposed to insert the phrase phase by phase. Um, condition 21 is just to insert within the relevant phase. And then with regard to condition three, References made to the design and access statement, we just want to add into that condition. The submission of the reserve matters shall also have regard to the design principles set out in the design and access statement. And then finally, um, condition seven, which relates to um, driveways. It's just to clarify that um, each drive should come forward at the time the dwelling is ready, as opposed to all drives. So there'd be a need to insert necessaries necessary to serve that dwelling. In all other respects, the conditions uh, are intended to remain as drafted. Can, can, I, back... can, I, can, I, can I ask a question? Um, my conditions go up to number 20, and you mentioned 21 and 23. I'll look on page 64. I'm on 17, 19. 17, 18, 19, 20, and you mentioned condition 20. 21. Um, Apologies. Uh, what's 21? Apologies, <coughs> it was quite, uh, condition 20. Oh, so, so what goes in 20? Uh, within, the relevant, uh, within the relevant phase. Oh, right. Yeah, that's, that's right. It sounded all right. It's just that I couldn't see it on there. Thank you. Do apologise. Um, so uh, the application is submitted in, in outline form with only access committed for up to 120 dwellings and associated infrastructure. Access will be taken from um, Burton Road opposite a, a bus turning area. A lay-by to the front of Burton Road would also be impacted and shortened in length. The Highway Authority raised no objection to the vehicle access as designed with there being good visibility along Burton Road. The site is uh, allocated for residential development under policy LPD 64. 
and is identified under policy H4 as being able to supply um, in the region of 115 dwellings. With the site being allocated for residential development, there is a presumption in favour uh, of what is proposed. The scheme will also be full, full policy compliant in terms of contributions, will secure 20% affordable housing, financial contributions towards education, libraries, the primary care trust, bus stop improvements and toward public open space if required, along with the installation of a local equipped area of play. The policy consideration of particular note is that the application has been advertised as a departure to, to the development plan in that policy LPD 64 identifies that development should not deliver homes until such time as the GAR is complete. However, having consulted the highway authority, it is noted that subject to a condition requiring the approval of a construction master plan, there is no objection to the application. It's also notable the construction of the GAR is well underway and targeted for completion toward the end of next year. So it is possible the road will be complete before development commences. However, if not, any possible highway impacts could be mitigated by the conditions suggested by the highway authority. It is not considered that this matter would justify a refusal of planning permission. Uh, having regard to the fact the application is allocated for residential development, the identified access to the site is acceptable and that it is a full policy compliant scheme in terms of contributions. It is recommended the application be granted outline permission as outlined on pages 61 to 64 of the agenda and subject to the alterations to the conditions as previously highlighted and subject to the signing of a section 106 legal agreement. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Um, we have the uh, outline planning application for 120 dwellings that land at the end of Linden Grove, which you'll find on page 50 of your agenda papers. I will, uh, I will officially move this as chair. And I'll second it. Thank you very much. And I'll open the debate and ask Kate to call councillors in alphabetical order, please. Councillor Adams. Thank you, uh, Kate, and thank you, Chair. Yeah, just um, this is obviously in my uh, my area. There's a couple of things I want to sort of say. First of all, really happy to see that we've got um, the Highway Authority requesting contributions towards a bus stop uh, provision um, and the 45,000 toward uh, sustainable transport, something which I think will serve uh, the development well. Um, and also as well, subsequently, the money going uh, to the uh, local Westdale surgery, Unity surgery, and Parkhouse Medical Centre and Apple Tree to assist in looking after those um, places uh, with those surgeries for the new um, residents. Um, I notice as well the lead, uh, sorry, the lead local flood authority has not raised um, an objection, um, <clears throat> which is which is very good news. Uh, I'm over the moon about that um, because we do have a bit of an issue with uh, with flood water coming off those hills. So I'll uh, I'll you know I'm. I'm very hopeful that we won't, you know, won't see any additional uh, runoff uh, causing problems. And hopefully, the I believe there looks like there's some sort of pond off to the uh, bottom of the um, uh, development, which should assist in that. And also, I understand they're in uh, discussions with Seven Trent to organise the any sort of foul water disposal as well, which which is good. Um, just a small point, uh, if I may, um, the uh, application site for outline is for 120 properties. I, I note in the um, LPD 64 um, that this was actually suitable for the supply of 115 homes. I wonder why the disparity uh, in that figure, if I could have some clarification on that, please. Well, the 115 is identified in the, the local plan. Um, it's going up to 120 is the maximum that could be allowed. If, for argument's sake, through the, the reserve matters application is submitted if the design for 120 will be unacceptable because of issues to do with the um, the character of the area etc then you know we may well then look to negotiate it down back to 115 but in effect um, you know the, the increase is relatively modest and um, we don't think it have any material impact on on the design but ultimately that will come through in terms of when the reserve matters application were to be submitted. Councillor Adams, if I could just add, um, in addition to Mr Bryan's comments, the local planning document is clear that the figures are approximate. OK, no, well, that, that, that answers that then. It was just, I just wanted to, you know, obviously we've, we've talked many times about 
overcrowding these sites and uh, you know I'm, I'm i'm always conscious of that uh, and ensuring that the developments are suitable um uh, suitable in size and we're not adding additional properties um you know not of a of a quality of size but as you say obviously at the moment this is outlined and if that's approximate then that, that answers that completely thank you very much uh, both of you thank you councillor barnes move the recommendation no comment councillor barnfather no questions thank you Councillor David Ellis. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to see this being brought forward. And in the light of the discussion on the previous item, I know that the applicant uh, mentioned affordable housing. So we certainly can see that com coming forward when it comes forward with the uh, reserve matters. Thank you. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Uh, no questions or comments. Thank you. Councillor Elwood. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want some clarification um, specifically on uh, when and where um, consultations are, uh, take place on, on developments with regards to parish councils. I've been told that uh, uh, Burton Joyce Parish Council weren't um, one of the consultees, which I can understand because it's, it's technically outside of the uh, uh, parish council, but it it's very close. It's a, literally a stone's throw away from uh, the, the parish area. And my recollection from previous uh, applications in previous uh, years is that the, the the parish councils are consulted, even if the development isn't actually in, you know, literally in the parish area but I, I would just like a little bit of clarification on when and where the, the, uh, the, the parishes are consulted on the on these sorts of things in effect we consult with all the um parish council that it falls within but there isn't one you know for this particular site so in effect i, I guess the the impact on stoke bardolf was considered to be relatively minimal so we, so we didn't go out to them um as well i guess we're not obliged to under statute and we didn't think there'd be any significant impact on that uh, on that parish if i could just add a further comment Mr. um any parish council could make comment on on any planning application um so as mr brian said you know that there's a statutory requirement to consult um a parish council on any development uh, within land within a particular parish but that doesn't mean that a parish council um, can't make um, comments on a planning application, um, which is not within the extent of um, you know, that, that particular parish. Councillor Hope. Uh, not, no comments really. I, I think it's quite good. Yes, there is affordable housing, but only if we actually see it being built. You know, I do stress this. This is one of the problems. Um, and the, the the second thing is, um, I'm always concerned when there is a flood risk. We, we put an awful lot of faith in the SUD system. Let's hope it works. Councillor Lawrence. Switch on again. You're, you're muted. Yeah, I'm sorry, it went on and off. Uh, I'm happy to support this. So I note that obviously it's only an outline uh, application, so I look forward to uh, full planning application coming in uh, with all the contributions to the various authorities in place. And I'm happy uh, that uh, the site can stand a, a further five dwellings. Councillor Paling. No further comment. Councillor Parr. Yes, I'm happy to uh, support the uh, uh, recommendation. I see it as a, a plus plus for the people that live within that uh, conurbation uh, and, and the uh, contributions that are being made are, are in my view, first class. So uh, look forward to uh, the uh, granting the planning permission that's required. Councillor Scroggie. <clears throat> uh, 
Yeah, I'm quite happy with the uh, the outline plan and application. The only the one thing I would stress is, I would hope that section of the gar is complete before any work is done, um, because the amount of traffic that could go through there um, could be quite uncomfortable for the residents living in Linden Grove and just on the edge of the Collet Loop Road. But I'm quite happy to support this. Councillor Wheeler. Uh, I'm happy to support the recommendations. Um, it's nice to see that there's um, 24 units allocated as affordable housing. Um, I'd just like to comment a few comments earlier about affordable housing. It'd be nice if we saw some developments coming forward that were all, all wholly um, social housing. Uh, so I look forward to that day. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Kate. Um, yeah, I mean, other than to say that I welcome the commitment to uh, uh, social housing, uh, affordable housing, sorry, um, and the one at section 106 agreement. Uh, other than that, no further comments. Councillor McCrossan. Yeah, I fully support the application and again, stressing the uh, social housing um, built into the application. Thank you. And Councillor Truscott. Yes, I fully support this. You know, the, it's part of the local planning document. There's extensive consultation on this matter back in you know, before the local planning document came out. And I think it's excellent that we're now, now seeing some movement on it. So I fully support this application. And would anybody else like to come back? OK. Thank you. OK, well, the recommendation you'll find on page 61, Grant Planning Commission, subject to the conditions below. I'm afraid I can't um, go through all the uh, alterations to the conditions because I wasn't supplied with the material beforehand. So I just hope people can remember uh, what was said. Um, but Kate, would you like to take the vote? Thank you. Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Barnes. Four. Councillor Barnfather. Four. Councillor David Ellis. Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Elwood. Four. Councillor Hope. Four. Councillor Lawrence. Four. Councillor Paling. Four. Councillor Parr. Four. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Councillor McCrossan. Four. And Councillor Truscott. Four. Thank you, Chair. That was carried unanimously. Thank you very much indeed. So if we can go on to item six on the agenda. Uh, application 2020 stroke 0103 land north of Park Road, Calverton, which is a diversion of Calverton footpath number 39. Sorry to interrupt, Chair, but did, didn't was it announced there would be a, a break after item five? You're absolutely correct. Sorry, yes, Councillor Wilkinson. Sorry, everybody. Thank you very much for reminding me, Councillor Wilkinson. There will indeed be a short break now. Oh. Thank you. Hello. Five minutes. Okay. This is agenda item six, application number 2020 stroke 0103, land north of Park Road, Calverton, diversion of Calvin Footpath number 39 for 90 metres. Um, is there any. Mm, Nigel, do you want to say anything about this? I've just got a couple of points just to, to raise that I'll need to go through, but um, I'll try to be brief. Um, there is a minor error in the report in that the last sentence of paragraph 1.1, .1, page 66, and the first sentence of paragraph 5.1, .1, page 67, should be amended. The reference to section 2751A refers to it being the power to divert a footpath to be diverted where an application for planning permission has been made, and if the application were granted, it will be necessary to authorise the diversion in order to enable the development to be carried out, rather than it being necessary to enable development to be carried out in accordance with a valid planning permission, as the RM Reserve Master's application still remains to be determined. Um, with regards to the current application, 
Um, it's apparent that there's an outline permission was granted under reference 2018 for the erection of 365 dwellings and a reserve matters application for the erection of some, some 351 dwellings is currently under consideration by the council. The layout proposed would require a 90 metre diversion of the footpath to respect the layout as proposed. With the exception of a small section that would run along a conventional highway, the remainder would be adjacent to public open space. There is no overriding concern with the alteration proposed and the start and end point of the footpath would remain the same. As a result, it's recommended that members authorise the di Director of Organisational Development and Democratic Services to make an order under Section 2571A of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990, following the procedures as, as outlined in the recommendation to the bottom of page 68 of the committee report. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Right, well, the proposal is the diversion of carbon footpath number 39 for 90 metres, which you'll find on page 66. Uh, I will formally move that. And I'll second it. Thank you very much. I'll open the debate. And Kate, will you uh, call the councillors up in alphabetical order, please? Yes, Councillor Adams. Yeah, I have nothing to add. Thank you, Kate. Councillor Barnes. Move the recommendation and support it. Thank you. Councillor Barnfather. No comments. Thank you. Councillor David Ellis. No comments. Thank you. Councillor Rachel Ellis. No comments. Thank you. Councillor Elwood. No comments. Councillor Hope. No comment. Councillor Lawrence. No comment. Councillor Paling. No comments. Councillor Parr. Go mute, John. <coughs> Councillor Parr? Yes. Uh, no comment, thank you. Councillor Scroggy? No comment. Councillor Truscott? No comment. Councillor Wheeler? No comment, thank you. Councillor Wilkinson? Thank you, no comment. Councillor McCrossan? No comment, thank you. Would anybody like to come back? No, thank you. Okay, well, the recommendation is on page 68 that members authorise the direction of organisation development and democratic services to make the order, etc. etc. Kate, would you like to uh, run through the list and take the vote? Yes, Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Barnes. Four. Councillor Barnfather. Four. Councillor David Ellis. Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Elwood. Four. Councillor Hope. Four. Councillor Lo Lawrence. Come on, Mary. Councillor Lawrence. Help me out to Meredith. Councillor Lawrence, are you there? Kate, it looks like he's dropped off. So, okay. Um, we can <laughs> continue without him and try and get him back. Probably a, a, Thank a you. Councillor Paling. Councillor Parr. Four. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Oh. Councillor. I, I am here, but oh. my bar keeps disappearing. Okay, Councillor McCrossan. Oh. I should say Councillor. Oh. Councillor Lawrence. Oh. Okay, and Councillor Truscott. Oh. Thank you. That was covered unanimously. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Now to go on to the next application, which is number 2020 stroke 0237, land south of Colic Loop Road, which is on page 70 of your agenda papers. And um, Bruno Moore of Sainsbury's Supermarket, who was down to uh, 
to present this item is not here, so I understand that Alec is going to read. Yeah, we've got uh, uh, we've got a letter from uh, Bruno Moore, Town Planning Policy and Transport Manager for Sainsbury's Supermarkets Limited, and I'll just read it out to you. So we are pleased that our Section 73 planning application has been recommended for approval by your officers, and we hope that you will also support these slightly revised plans. As you may be aware, planning permission was originally granted in 2014 for a Sainsbury's supermarket and petrol station alongside employment uses as part of the regeneration of the wider Colic site. Since the application was originally granted, retail has evolved and the amended scheme is designed to reflect these changes. Sainsbury's remain committed to investing in Colic. The new store will provide a full range of Sainsbury's own brand and branded food alongside our popular clothing and general merchandise offer. The proposed store also includes an Argos, which will bring great choice and value while providing a convenient shopping location for local residents. The proposal will also deliver a number of significant economic benefits. The investment provided by Sainsbury's will act as a catalyst for the regeneration of the wider site. The scheme will also create employment opportunities for local residents during construction and after store opening. In-store job opportunities will be full-time and part-time, all of them supported by Sainsbury's training programmes. The scheme will also deliver substantial benefits for the local community through our food donation, volunteering and local community and charity engagement programmes. Subject to planning permission being granted tonight, we hope to begin construction works by the end of this year and open the store in 2021. Investment and the creation of jobs are always important, but they are especially critical during this period of national economic uncertainty. We look forward to working with you to get the economy back on track. Thank you again for your support and we look forward to jointly progressing our plans for a new Sainsbury's in Colic. Thank you very much. Um, Mike, do you want to say anything or is uh, Nigel going to introduce this item? Mike, is anybody hearing me? Mike, you're on mute there. I do apologise. Um, Councillor Truscott, yes, I would like to introduce this application. Okay, thank you. The application has been made to update the list of approved plans. Of particular note is that the floor area of the building is reduced by 243 square metres as a result of operational changes since the grant of planning permission, given a greater emphasis on deliveries and internet shopping. The overall appearance of the building, particularly the front aspect, will not significantly alter and the alterations proposed are largely back of house. A new ecological appraisal has been submitted in support of the application to reflect the passage of time since the original application was determined some six years ago. Six years ago. Phase one habitat survey identifies that there will be a need to undertake additional surveys with regard to great crested newts, bats, reptiles and invertebrates. All of these detailed surveys have been submitted, save for the two remaining invertebrate surveys. The reports identify that no great crested newts or reptiles are found, and the site is used for the foraging of bats, but no suitable roosts were found on site. It is noted that Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust remains their objection to the application on the ground that um, the two uh, invertebrate surveys have not been completed in support of the current application. However, this has to be weighed against the fact that there is an extant planning permission in place that could be implemented and any possible detrimental impacts upon protected species would need to be enforced under other legislation, such as the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. Conditions are, however, pro proposed to ensure that the additional surveys are undertaken. The travel plan and air quality planning obligations have now been discharged. All payments have been received by the County Council and the Borough Council. I therefore recommend that the recommendation is amended as follows. 
grant planning permission subject to conditions outlined in the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Well, they have the proposal on page 70, section 73 application, etc., etc. And I will formally move that. And I'll second it. Thank you very much. I'll open the debate and ask Kate to call councillors in alphabetical order, please. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Kate, and thank you, Chair. Yeah, just um, I'm just incredibly glad to see this here. I think we've, we've all been driving past that site thinking for a substantial amount of time. When is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And finally, maybe it is going to happen. So uh, I'm, I'll be glad uh, to support the application. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Barnes. Support the application and look forward to it being developed. Thank you. Councillor Barnfather. No comments. Thank you. Councillor David Ellis. As everybody else, it's good to see movement in the pleasant, present climate. And I'm glad to hear that Sainsbury's remain committed to investing in Colic and Gedling. So I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Yes, thank you. I'm pleased to see this uh, application uh, and look forward to future development of the Colic site. Councillor Elwood. Uh, no addition. Thank you. Councillor Hope. I, I remember this coming round the first time, actually, and, and the major concern was the petrol pulling station, as I remember it. That's gone, so, yeah. uh, assuming that everything is sorted out with regards to that, um, I've got no further, thing, further things to add. Councillor Lawrence. Yes, well, obviously, it's in my ward. Uh, it used to be in the former Netherfield and Collett Ward, and I've got on my computer plans dated 18th of January 2011, uh, a consultation on the 10th of February 2011, and uh, then uh, 2013, cutting from the Nottingham Post, or the Evening Post as it was then probably, 1,000 jobs in store as planners clear the way for development. So it, it, I understand the problems at the moment, uh, uh, and I do uh, accept uh, the commitment of Sainsbury's, uh, given the problems that we all face. But uh, it is a great disappointment that it has taken nine years for this to come to fruition. I look forward, uh, as the developers have said, for it to be opened in 2021, when uh, I might be still young enough to go along there. Thank you. I, obviously, I wholeheartedly support this application. Councillor Paling. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm laughing at Meredith. I haven't had a comment about his age. Um, I, I fully support this application. Like others, I was really worried that it was going to be a derelict site for many years to come. Unlike Council Lawrence, I'm in a way quite pleased that they didn't develop the site immediately. I think it was for the petrol tanks of the um, opposite rather than the petrol yeah. station yeah. going to serve the, um, the, the site. Because if they had built a large superstore, that might in itself have become derelict, sold on or whatever. So uh, I, in a way, as long as we get on with it now, I'm really pleased that we are going to have a Sainsbury's Argus and a good development on the slide. Thank you. Councillor Parr. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, a long time in getting to this stage, but I fully support the recommendation. Councillor Scroggy. I've got nothing to add. Councillor Wheeler. Councillor Wheeler. Henry. Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. mute. <laughs> um, yeah, fully support recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, yeah, I, I mean, overall, very supportive, uh, echoing many of the the comments that have been said before. My only regret is that, unfortunately, the, the inclusion of the Argos 
uh, part of the store. I think we'll almost certainly lead to a vacant unit on the next door Victoria retail park because I don't think there's any way that they will uh, maintain both um, both an in-store and, uh, and a separate Argos, Argos unit, but I've always very supportive. Councillor McCrossan? Yes, fully supportive of the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Truscott? Yes, I fully support it, and as everybody else says, I'm really pleased to be actually going ahead with it. Would anybody else like to come back? Yes, please. Uh, with regard to the Argos, uh, which is uh, in the Netherfield ward on the Victoria Retail Park, uh, it was something that uh, I briefly discussed with a representative from the developers. I mean, they rang, I think they probably rang uh, members of the committee. I didn't say which way I was going to vote on it. And uh, uh, I did ask them about Argos, and uh, they did say, uh, whilst they obviously couldn't commit themselves, that there are examples of two retail parks being quite close together with uh, Argos is in both of them, but we'll have to see, obviously. Uh, it would be a pity if uh, there is a vacant unit uh, on the Victoria Retail Park, but uh, obviously I welcome Argos in my ward. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Now, the uh, recommendation is on page 77 of your agenda papers, and it is that the application be granted permission subject to the conditions outlined below, etc., etc. So, Kate, would you like to take the vote, please? Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Barnes. For. Councillor Barnfather. Oh. Councillor El David Ellis. Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Elwood. Four. Councillor Hope. Four. Councillor Lawrence. Four. Councillor Paling. Four. Councillor Parr. Four. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Councillor McCrossan. Four. Councillor Truscott. Four. Thank you. That was carried unanimously. OK, thank you very much. That recommendation has been approved. Mm -hmm. OK, on to agenda item eight, which is application number 2020 stroke 02271212. 172 Lamley Lane, Gedling. Um, Mike, would you like to uh, to introduce this for us? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Further to the publication of the report, the applicant has provided the following summarised comments. There will be little visibility of the site from the surrounding area as the hedges along the boundary are high. Trees have been planted along the rear and northern boundary, which, once mature, will make the bungalow invisible in the landscape. It is considered that the dormer windows would improve the current roof lines and will blend into the existing tiles and would allow the occupiers to have more practical use of the internal space. The bungalow has been extended by 55%, but the original bungalow was very small and the loft space is not as large as it looks due to the roof angle and low ridge height. The existing front dormer window on the property was relocated during construction due to a ridge line change. The garage at the property was constructed under permitted development. The committee should approve the application or allow further dialogue with the planning department as the concerns raised are unwarranted. So to summarise the report, the dwelling was granted, sorry, the, the extensions to the dwelling was granted planning permission in 2015 um, for substantial alterations and extensions which have now been implemented. Taking note from the case officer report in 2015, their calculations suggest that the overall floor space of the dwelling uh, was proposed to be increased by 50 
five percent. Would you repeat that? Sorry, taking note from the case officer report in 2015, their calculations suggest that the overall floor space of the dwelling was proposed to be increased by 55%. Thank you. The existing plans submitted with the proposal suggest that the floor area at first floor is greater than what was approved in 2015. The 2015 plans show, show that only the central area within the roof space will be utilised as floor area. The plan submitted show that the existing floor area in situ is greater than 55%. This floor area will be retained as part of the proposed development and the addition of the dormer window units would increase the area of usable floor area within this first floor owing to the greater headroom afforded by the structures. The proposed plan suggests that an increase of 20 square metres of usable floor space within the first floor area over and above that shown on the approved 2015 plans. This will take the total increase to 74%, substantially over the 50% limit set by LPD policy 13, and as such, cumulatively, the additions would not be considered proportionate to the original dwelling. Floor space calculations help to quantify the difference in size between the original building and the proposed addition, but consideration also needs to be given to the design of the proposal and whether its scale, form, massing and layout result in a property which would have an acceptable impact upon the openness of the green belt. The proposed dormer windows will be readily visible um, from the public realm with clear views for some distance as you travel along Lamley Lane from the north. The three additional structures would add significant bulk to the building and increase its dominance within the countryside location. This, combined with the previous additions, would, in my view, be harmful to the openness of the green belt. Having regard to the application submission and the additional information provided by the applicant, I do not consider that there are any very special circumstances for allowing the development. Further to the publication of the report, it was identified that the application had not been advertised in the Nottingham Post as a departure from the development plan. The development has now been advertised in the press in order to comply with the Development Management Procedure Order 2015. I recommend that permission is refused in accordance with the report following the expiry of the statutory press notice, subject to no further material considerations being raised. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Well, Excuse me, um, I missed the very last couple of sentences of that. I do apologise. I will repeat them. Thank you. The commission is refused in accordance with the report following the expiry of the statutory press notice, subject to no further material considerations being raised. Okay, well, the proposal, which we find on page 84, is uh, to replace existing roof lights with three dormer windows. Um, so I will formally move that. Um, and I'll formally proposal. second it. I'll formally second it. Okay, we'll open the debate and ask Kate or mm -hmm. councillors in alphabetical order. Councillor Adams. I have no comment to make, thank you. Councillor Barnes. Support the recommendation. Councillor Barnfather. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, representing a similar area to where this um, application is cited, uh, it's not the first time that we've seen applications which have been approved and then are, are totally ignored by the applicant or the developer. Uh, Mr Avery actually highlighted the additional room at ground floor level, deviation from the approved plans, porch to the front elevation, deviation from the approved plans. 
uh, front dormer window built in a different location, deviation from the approved plans, additional floor space, de de deviation from the approved plans. Uh, and the applicant's response on this occasion seems to be, well, that's fine because we'll just build a big hedge uh, or we'll <laughs> plant a tree to, to, to cover it up. Uh, you, you know, we, give plan we have planning rules for a reason. Applications are considered, recommended and approved for a reason. Uh, you know, I, I, I am categorically in support of the officer's recommendation on this. This is just a willful um, ignoring of the, of the planning rules and, and, and just another way to try and get around them. Yeah. Councillor David Ellis. Uh, thank you. Um, I think I'm going to uh, destroy the uh, unanimity that we've had until up till now in the meeting. Uh, maybe could I explain well, that the delegation panel asked this to come to, to committee after a lengthy discussion and I think Mr. Avery's summarised the, the sorts of views we were we were we were taking, the the, the balance we were we were striking. The the key to my mind is in paragraph seven point eight and seven point ten, whether replacing the roof light roof lights has an unacceptable impact on the openness of the of the green belt. And the um, the report sets out the issues and, and strikes a balance against the development. But I, I can't personally see why replacing roof lights with dormer windows uh, makes a, makes a significant difference to the openness of the, the green belt. You can see on the um, the slides that were circulated the views of the of the building, and I personally can't see that it affects the, the openness of the green belt. So on this occasion, I'll be voting against the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rachel Ellis. Sorry, no comments at this time. Councillor Elwood. Uh, no additional comments, thank you. Councillor Hope. Yeah, um, a couple of things, really. I've listened to two previous comments. What, what, one outlining all of the things that, that in a previous planning application were not followed. I, I've actually built an extension on my house about 40 years ago. And, and interestingly, throughout that, that building of the extension, I had officers from the local authority coming along and checking that things were done properly. Right? You know, the foundations and I had to cover a drain and you know, various things. And they kept checking. And there was absolutely no chance that I could have put something in the wrong place or made it a yard longer because there was a bloke there. two weeks later who'd say, no, you can't put it there, take it up. What has happened to that? I mean, if somebody Clarity. is putting in a planning application and then not following the planning application that he put in, you know, the question is, and, and, and you know, whose fault is it? Is it his or is it ours because we're not doing the checks that we should? Secondly, I tend to agree with Mr. Owen. Um, what the man is doing, as far as I can see, is changing a roof light into a dormer window which looks out over a large area of farmland. Um, and, and to that extent, um, I don't think he's right. And, and my question is, are we punishing him for stuff he did before that we should have checked on? Or are we um, looking at this application in a clear light? Equally, though, you know, we have got a rule on the amount you can increase your house size by. So maybe we should stick to that. To be honest, I haven't actually made my mind up yet. I I I, I might support Councillor Ellis. I might go with it. I'm not sure. Councillor Lawrence. 
Kate, if I could just respond to yes, sorry. the two questions um, raised by Councillor Hope, um, yeah, if I may, please. please. Um, so in terms of the responsibility for ensuring that development is constructed in accordance with the approved plans, that rests with the applicant. Um, it rests firmly with the applicant um, and not the Borough Council. Um, so but, but, but can I ask, before you go on, can I ask, do we, you know, because I can remember I got, when I did my, my, my extension, I got a, a little pack of um, papers and um, tear off things um, and I had to ring the borough council and they came and checked and I gave them it and they said yeah that's right and, I, and we carried on. There, it, there was a system of checking and I couldn't move on until my foundations had been checked and I couldn't move on until my JC, JCB, what's it called? In, 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 in the ceiling. And, yeah. um, and, and it, it, I'm assuming now that what you're saying is no, we're not going to do any of that checking. We're not going to make sure you're complying with the rules. We're just going to make it your responsibility. So, so if, if we're doing that, what comeback have we got? You know, have we been to this chap and said, no, your door and window's in the wrong place. Pull the bloody thing down and put it in the right place. <laughs> the council so, hope so this. So we're encouraging people to ease, ease things along and do it the way they want to do it. And, and I think that is a problem. So Sorry. what you're referring to in terms of those checks to make sure that development is undertaken to the required standards, there is different legislation. So there's a building regulations. So at Gatlinburg Council, um, we operate a building control service, um, but applicant, well, developers um, are at liberty to use an approved, um, an approved inspector, so a private sector business to provide approval of building regulations. But I think what you're referring to when you've had um, an extension constructed at your property, <laughs> Yes, the building inspector, whether it's um, Gedlin Borough Council or an approved inspector, will check construction work at various stages. So that is a, a, a separate process. In terms of planning enforcement, um, within the resources um, that we have available, we do undertake um, some monitoring and the planning case officers do undertake um, some monitoring um, so far as practically possible within the, within the um, you know, resources that we have available. To come back to you in terms of your question, you know, you, you asked the question, are we punishing the applicant for planning permission here? Absolutely not. Um, we're considering this planning application. So the officer recommendation and the report before members assesses the application um, in light of the development plan policies that we have in force at the current time uh, and national policies as well. Okay, now I'll accept that. Thanks very much. Yeah. Councillor Lawrence. Um, I shall be supporting the officer's recommendation and I wholeheartedly agree with Councillor Barnfather. Councillor Paling. I, I think I am going to be supporting David Ellis in, in, in what he said. Um, I definitely agree. Um, to me, to have this place only partially available is in itself a, a, tragedy, not a tragedy. And I think the dormer windows uh, will not impact on the view will not tell that there is an increase in the footprint of the house in the from the just having the dormer windows. In fact, I personally think that they will look better in the skylights and are clearly different. Um, however, Mark, you said something about um, I, I don't know whether it was a deferment what you, that you mentioned, but there was something in, in, in your introduction. That suggests that we might not go to the group, but we might do something different. Could I ask what that was? Sorry, Councillor Palin, was that a question to me? I'm oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, 
I'm very, I'm very sorry, but you've been breaking up. So I, I, could, could you repeat that, please? Uh, my understanding was at, at the beginning, you said there was something in the um, applicant uh, had sent a letter saying if we were going to refuse, could it be deferred? Was that, was that the word? Or yes, I did. I've, I've picked up what you said now, um, Councillor Palin. Thank you very much. Um, so the final bullet point. So what I did in the introduction is I summarised um, an additional letter which yeah. has been provided by the applicant. So the final point which the applicant met, the applicant made was that the committee should approve the application or allow further dialogue with the planning department as the concerns raised are unwarranted. So is that do, do we move a deferral to allow that to happen? No. Yeah. No. How do we how do we vote for that? We we have to vote on what's in front of us. So why have we had the letter read out to us? Because all all submissions must be read out, must be presented okay. to the committee. Thank you. So I would, in, in introducing any application where, where we have a late item of information, um, if we receive application um, information which is made, which is provided further to the publication of the report, normally what I would do, or, or any officer within the service who's presenting an application, we would um, pre-see um, the additional information and bring that to the attention of members. Thank you. I still think I'm in favour of the door windows. Councillor Parr. Thank you. I have no additional comment to make to what's already been made, but uh, support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Scoggie. Uh, yeah, I've got a question, if that's all right. Um, I don't know whether it's for the officer or the solicitor. Uh, I'm mindful of what Councillor David Ellis said and what Councillor Barnfather said. Uh, the question I would uh, ask is, if we were to go against the officer's recommendation, uh, would we be setting a precedent for other developments in the Green Belt to go over? Um, maybe that's something the solicitor can uh, answer or the officer maybe. I'm happy to answer this question. Um, each each application is considered um, on the basis of its own merits. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't set a it doesn't set a precedent um, because each application is judged on the basis of its own merit, having regard to all of the material planning considerations um, at the time. I don't know if Mrs. Pragon um, would wish to um, add, add any further comments. <laughs> Um, no, uh, Councillor Scroggy, I support the comments that have been made by um, Mike Avery. We have to consider every planning application um, on the information that you have presented in respect of that application and it would be considered on its own merits. Come on, John. Okay, Kate. Okay. okay, thank you. Councillor Wheeler. Uh, no further comments to make, thank you. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Kate. Um, I find myself in the, uh, the unusual position of, uh, uh, of agreeing with uh, Council Balfarver almost word for word. Uh, don't get used to it, Chris. Just, I'm not sure it's going to happen ever so often. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, um, yeah, I, mean, I don't think I could have put it uh, any better. The, um, the proposals are, are clearly going to be prominent, and, and I'm really struggling to see how trees are going to mask it. They're going to have to be pretty pretty substantial to, uh, um, to to do that. We have a policy, we have a limit on, on the uh, uh, um, the increase in, in floor space and this goes significantly um, uh, over that. It does feel like mission creep um, to me and that I will be supporting the uh, the officer's recommendations. Councillor McCrossan. Yeah, I support the officer's recommendation and no further comment, thank you. Councillor Truscott. Yeah. Um, I agree with the officer's recommendation. I object to the development uh, of three dormer windows. And though they're on the side of the building, they're extremely prominent as you drive or walk down Lamley Lane. 
because this is the first house that you see. And I don't agree with the argument that they are no more intrusive or visually prominent than roof lines. You know, I don't understand that argument at all. So I'd completely agree with the conclusions of the planning officer that they are unduly prominent and represent an inappropriate development in the green belt. Mm. And therefore should be re refused planning permission. OK, would anybody else like to come back? Yes, yes please. please. And was that Councillor Rachel Ellis? It was, and someone else, I believe. Yeah, Councillor Barnfather. Shall I, um, shall I go first, Councillor Barnfather? Yes, please, Rachel. Thank you. Um, I've been listening with interest to the debate um, because I've been weighing it up in my own mind. Uh, and um, the issue that's exercising me at the moment, and I understand uh, the issue, you know, the comments that made on, in both ways, um, is that this man had planning permission, whatever else he didn't have, um, to uh, develop his uh, roof space. And as part of that, presumably he had permission to put in flooring and he had permission to put in the roof lights. So what we're not we're dealing with is not an extension of floor space per se, but an extension of usable floor space. The actual building is not in not itself good. going to get much. Well, not going to get much bigger. What's going to happen is that the roof lights are going to be converted into uh, dormer windows. Now, I happen to agree with uh, Councillor Palin that uh, actually I think the dormer windows would improve the look of the building rather than uh, be a detriment. Um, but I, I'm interested because I, I don't see... Um, that although it extends the usable floor space, it, it doesn't increase the actual floor space one bit. And that's that's what's exercising my mind on this particular it's case. It's the view. Councillor Barnfather. Yeah, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to come back, Chair. I listened to Councillor Hope with some incredulity, I'll be perfectly honest. It's the Council's fault that the developer, on behalf of the applicant, didn't build the building uh, right in the first place. That's like making the Council the building police. Well, no, I said they didn't. You, if I may finish, if I may finish, Using that analogy then, when a person goes out and commits a crime, in future will arrest the chief constable rather than the offender. Yeah, uh, complete and utter nonsense. The reality of it is that the this the, this application, and it's, it's very clearly worded in the conclusion and in the recommendation, will cumulatively result in a disproportionate addition to the dwelling that would represent inappropriate development within the green belt. Stop. Full stop. OK. Um, excuse me, can I have some feedback from officers about this issue of floor space versus usable floor space? Oh, oh, can I come in? No. Yes, Councillor Ellis, I, I can come back um, in terms of um, floor space. Um, the policy, policy LPD 13, is, um, is clear. That's referring to uh, floor space. These proposals would increase the usable floor space. And the only way that that usable floor space can be um, you know, increased further is by the construction of these extensions to um, the roof. Um, you know, which would have, you know, in my view, an, Im uh, an adverse impact upon the openness of the green belt. So I think that the policy um, position is 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 clearly set out in the report. Um, and as I as I summarised um, at the at the outset when, when I introduced the application. Yeah, can I speak? Do you have a do you? Are you coming back on, on what Councillor Barnfather said? Well, partly, but partly in general. 
can I speak? Yeah, okay, but you know, can you? You've had, you know, you've, uh, you've come I'll, in I'll keep it twice brief. already. Um, um, can you keep it no, brief? No, I haven't spoken twice already. I've spoken once, but I'll speak again. It, it's it's a very quick one. Look, we give people planning permission to do something. We've seen the plans. We've seen what they intend to do, um, and we've seen where they're going to put whatever they're going to put. What do we do about checking that it's in the right place? Listening, listening to the officer, um, the implication is, well, they can ask us to keep a check on But I don't, I don't see that don't, this... Hang on, let, let me finish. But if they don't want to, they can employ somebody else to keep a check on it. And... If that if they put it in the wrong place and that other person says no, it's fine. Is there nothing we can do about it? Um, it, it seems to me that the planning authorities have lost a lot of control. I'll stop there. Yeah, thank you very much. I don't actually think that's relevant to this. Well, I think it is. I think it is. No, I don't think it is. Good for you. Okay, has everybody spoken, Kate? Everybody has spoken, and those that wish to come back have spoken also. Okay, thank you. So, we have the recommendation on page 89, which is to refuse planning permission for the reasons listed in the paragraph below. So, as Kate goes through the list alphabetically, if you say Yes, that means you are agreeing with the recommendation, which is to refuse planning permission. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Very much for, Kate. Thank you. Councillor Barnes. For. Councillor Barnfather. For. Councillor David Ellis. Against. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Against. Councillor Elwood. For. Councillor Hope. Abstain. <laughs> Councillor Lawrence. For. Councillor Paling. Against. Councillor Parr. For. Councillor Scroggy. For. Councillor Wheeler. For. Councillor Wilkinson. For. Councillor McCrossan. Councillor McCrossan. Thank you. Um, Councillor Truscott. Thank you. That was carried. OK, thank you very much. That uh, planning application has been refused. We can go on now to um, the next item on the agenda. If I can find it. Which is a tree preservation order uh, 0130. 383 Mapley Plains, seven oak trees. You've got all that in front of you. Nobody, um, is anybody going to speak to that one? Move, we take the vote. Yeah, nope. Okay. Um, So we have the proposal on page number 92, Three. To tree preservation order um, to confirm without notification. Is there any debate on this? Anybody want to speak? No? Hello, Chair. Yeah, hello. 
Councillor Wheeler. Councillor Wheeler wishes to speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah I'd, ju I'd just like to say that these trees are absolutely fantastic. Um, you can come across these trees at the top of Coppice, Coppice Road. Um, they, they are beautiful trees. Uh, they, they um, throughout the year, give uh, give a lot of joy to local residents when they walk up to the top of Mapley Plains and along that area along the ridge line there. Absolutely fantastic trees. So I'm really pleased to see these here today to be given a uh, tree protection order. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, are we going to run through a list to uh, to vote on this? Was this moved, Chair? Seconded? I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. I formally move. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so to the vote. Um, Councillor Adams? Four. Councillor Barnes? Four. Councillor Barnfather? Four. Councillor David Ellis? Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis? Four. Councillor Elwood? Four. Councillor Hope? Four. Councillor Lawrence? Four. Councillor Paling? Four. Councillor Parr? Four. Councillor Scroggy? Four. Councillor Wheeler? Councillor Wheeler? Four. Four. Councillor Wilkinson? Four. Councillor McCrossan? Four. Councillor Truscott? Four. Thank you. That was carried. OK, thank you very much. Agenda item 10 is another TPO. One Broadhurst Close Woodborough, uh, one cedar tree. Um, I formally move. Seconded. Okay, would anybody like to speak on that? Go to a vote. Go to the vote then. The recommendation is to confirm the TPO. Councillor Adams? Four. Councillor Barnes? Four. Councillor Barnfather? Four. Councillor David Ellis? Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis? Four. Councillor Elwood? Four. Councillor Hope? Four. Councillor Lawrence? Four. Councillor Paling? Four. Councillor Parr? Four. Councillor Scroggy? Four. Councillor Wheeler? Four. Councillor Wilkinson? Four. And apologies for missing the formal second thing. You caught me on the hop there. I wasn't expecting it quite so quickly. <laughs> Councillor McCrossan? Four. And Councillor Truscott. Four. Thank you, that was carried. Okay, that CPO is confirmed. Item 11 on the agenda, that CPO uh, 147153 Coronation Walk. Protection of three English oaks, one Scots pine and one common ash. Um, I'll formally move. And I'll formally second. Anybody want to comment on that one? Yes, please, Chair. OK, please yeah. do so. Thank Councillor you. Adams. Thank you, Kate. Yes, um, just really to uh, say I'm really happy to see this here. The um, Coronation Walk uh, house, houses have a fantastic uh, line behind them of native trees. And I'm over the moon to see another five of these protected. Um, I want to ensure that all the wildlife corridors across uh, Gedling, where possible, are protected not only for the well-being of residents, but obviously for the wildlife um, for now and for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, OK, recommendation is to confirm the TPO. Would you like to um, take the vote? Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Barnes. Four. Councillor Barnfather. Four. Councillor David Ellis. Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Elwood. Four. Councillor Hope. Four. Councillor Lawrence. Four. Councillor Paling. Four. Councillor Parr. Four. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Councillor McCrossan. Four. Councillor Truscott. Four. 
Thank you. That was carried. OK, thank you very much. Let's move on then to item 12 on the agenda, which is an appeal decision. Land adjacent to 8 Myrtle Grove. Appeal dismissed. Noted. Item 13, appeal decision. A Barn, Ling Farm, Rickett Lane, Bledith. Appeal dismissed. To be noted. Item 14, appeal decision, application number. Appeal B, Barn D, Ling Farm, Rickett Lane, Bledith. Appeal dismissed. Yep. yep. Then on to um, agenda item 15, which is planning delegation panel action sheets. 5th of June, page 109. 12th of June, page 111. 19th of June, page 113. 26th of June, page 117. 30th, 10th of July, page 119. 17th of July, page 121, and 24th of July, 125. Okay, agenda item 16, future applications. Any comments or questions? Agenda item 17, any other items which the chair considers urgent? I don't have any. So it just remains to bring the meeting to a close. Thank you all for attending. Thank you all a safe journey home. Thank you, Chair.